My guest today is Odin Clack, and I'm so excited to have him because he's a very interesting man and does a lot of interesting things with his hands. Odin owns Odin Leather Goods, both in Grandscape, uh, down the road in Frisco, and here on Main Street in uh, Louisville. And I'm glad he's here. Odin, welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, Terry. You're, you know, we don't have enough time to get into all the interesting things in your life, so we're going to dig in pretty quick. That's fine. Uh, Odin, what is your connection in Grandscapes? Let's talk about that for just a minute. Yeah, so uh, Grandscape, I opened my first retail store in Grandscape two years ago. Uh, March 3rd, 2019, I think was the date. And that was, um, that was just uh, two, about two weeks before all the COVID stuff hit the area mm -hmm. and all the shutdowns happened. So I, um, I've been an online retailer for a number of years. It's how I grew my business. Uh, and then I was convinced, and I did say convinced, I had to be convinced to do it, uh, to open a retail store. After about a year and a half of planning, ended up opening a retail store in the colony, uh, this great new development called Grandscape, which as you know, uh, yeah, was there open for a week and a half before we got shut down. I'm with you right there. We don't talk about 2020. <laughs> I'm telling you, people ask me when I opened the restaurant here in Louisville, and I said, well, January of 2020, but we don't want to talk about yeah, 2020. We, we lost about a year and a half of, uh, of time there, it seems. But we're back. We made but, it through that. It's but like, you had, like you. Uh, but even when you opened up, opened up, you still had your online I sales, mm -hmm. which is a, a huge a huge part of yeah. your business, right? So when, everyone, when all the COVID stuff hit, when everyone else was trying to scramble to figure out how they were going to keep their businesses open, we were fortunate because my business had been online for, you know, the, since we started. That's my background is on online marketing. Um, so we were already there. We were able to just turn on. We went back to doing what we've always been doing. And uh, we kept the doors open, kept the lights on, and kept making great leather goods. Well, I'm going to tell you something right now. You, uh, Odin, you do make great leather goods. Thank you, sir. I, and we're it. so, when, when I heard, I was here before you in Old Town, and when I heard that you were coming, I didn't know who you were. Sure. But the the minute I stepped in your store on Main Street, I went, "Wow, this guy is very talented." Well, thank you, thank you. It's um, I'm very proud of what we've been able to do. And I keep on saying the word "we." This is not just me anymore. Started off as it was just me for a while. I started business on my dining room table, in fact. But now we have a team of eight people, including my wife. And I should actually I should call that uh, ten people because my two kids are just as involved as anyone else at this point. Um, and we grew it from just a hobby and turned it into a brand and, and a business and uh, the online store and then finally now two retail stores. And I, I will tell you, this is not planned. This wasn't something that we started off 10 years ago. So you know what, we're going to have this massive retail empire. No, this was something that just kind of grew very organically for us. And we've just been letting God take us wherever he wants. Speaking about your wife, and by the way, I'm going to throw this in here and, and she'll appreciate it. You ain't no good without her. I am. Uh, I'm worth very little without her. I would agree with that, sir, for sure. You're like me and the rest of us. We married way up the ladder. Way up the ladder, and uh, and and she doesn't have to remind me. I can remind myself of that every day when she's around. So, what brought you to to Old Town Louisville? I mean, yeah. I mean, just tell us that story. Yeah. So, Old Town Louisville. Um, here's the story. I have been in another flex space. You know, again, we are we run a very lean business. I've kept it very lean. I grew this out of my, my home garage for a number of years. Once we outgrew the home garage, we moved into a 1,500 square foot facility in Coppell, which is where we reside. Uh, that space took care of us for you know, four and a half years, but it was one small office that was air conditioning and the rest of the space was all non-climate controlled. And we got every bit of you know, value out of that space that we could. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, that space really helped us grow to the level we are now. But after doing that for four or five years, essentially, Working in open air, uh, and when it's when it's hot outside, it's hot inside. When it's cold outside, it's really cold inside, right? Mm -hmm. um, we did that for a number of years. We decided, you know, we just we just don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. We noticed, even though we were getting work done, we weren't as productive as we sure. wanted to be. And so we started looking for new spaces last summer. Um, we start actually we started looking in June or July, and we we're looking for the right space for us. Mm -hmm. The right space is going to allow us to be comfortable that's gonna make me feel good about hiring more people and bringing them in, because I didn't want my team to be out in the heat. Um, me and Brandon is my, one of my main production guys. We're crazy enough to do that every day, right? Right. right. Some of us are that Some way. Some of us are that way, we don't mind, right? But when you talk about bring, expanding your team and taking care of your team, that's not really what, how you want them to work. Mm -hmm. And so we need a space that's gonna allow us to grow, expand, be more productive, and bring in more people. And so, in all honesty, we had picked out another space in Coppell, um, and we thought that space was gonna work for us. Mm -hmm. But there was just some things that just weren't right, you know. 
uh, in terms of what we're going to put into the space to develop it out. And so we decided, hey, let's just take a, a literally a ride around the block. Mm -hmm. And in that process, we rode through Old Town. And I'll be honest, Old Town is not a place I frequented before. I didn't know much about Old Town. We rode down the street here. We came across the building. It's like, man, the vibe down here is just great. It has that Old Town vibe to it. Right. The building looks good, and we make a product that really lends itself to, um, you know, more of a, a older aesthetic. Right. right. And Old Town had all those markets. So we got out. We walked around, called a few numbers on a few buildings, and one of those buildings had a woman's name on it by the name of Alexandria, and we called the number. In 15 minutes or so, she called me back, and she said, "Mr. Clack." I've already looked at your website, I've already know who you are, I know the products you make, and I'd absolutely love to have you here. Mm -hmm. It was like, well, heck, now I've got to go look at the space. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. We came and looked at the space, and I tried to give myself every excuse why it was not the right space for us. I was right. trying to talk myself out of it, because it was bigger mm -hmm. than what we were looking at originally. And uh, we just fell in love with it very quickly. And uh, we had a goal, we didn't reach our goal, we had a goal of getting the store open by uh, Western Days of last year. Mm -hmm. We, we, we didn't reach that goal, but that's okay. Uh, we decided to put a lot more into the space than we had planned. We redid a lot of things, replaced the new, the front windows and flooring and everything else, took out some walls. And uh, we got in, I think we opened up finally in October mm -hmm. of last year. Mm -hmm. And then the retail store opened up in November of last year. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. It's a beautiful store. Thank You've you. done a great job uh, renovating it, building it out. But I, what you, listen, I'm gonna give you this suggestion. Sure. And um, you may want to jump on it. You need to charge money for smells. <laughs> I walk in that store and I don't want to leave because I just love the smell yeah. <laughs> of leather. This is one of the bands when the weather is nice, we can open the doors. I hear you can smell the leather out on the sidewalk. No doubt. Which is great. I'm not going to charge. That's part of my strategy. It's part of my marketing strategy, right? <laughs> it's you got to like, put some fans inside and start blowing the smell out. <laughs> it's kind of like barbecue. If I need to get <laughs> people in here, I lock I like my pits, you know. Can you smell the barbecue these days? Huh? I, can you smell the barbecue these days, the smoke this, these days? No, not much. Just see, and I can't smell the leather. Yeah, yeah. Not when, been I, doing so long. when I get a new roll of uh, hides in, I can smell it for a few, few uh, seconds. Yeah. And I never smell it again. So yeah. I take for granted the smell of leather. Yeah. If I'm away from it, if I'm away from the smoke, yeah. I, 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 I've got to have it. Yeah. I mean, I've, it's an addiction to me. There I've got go. to have the smell of the smoke. I'm sure you do. Sure. Uh, with leather. Uh, Odin, let's talk about working with the city yeah. of Louisville. Because I, I've built a lot of restaurants in the last 35 years, and uh, cities can always be challenging, and most of them have been. Yeah. But the city of Louisville, I don't know what it is about this city and the city management. Uh, 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 when I came in, Donna Barron was the city manager, now uh, Claire Powell is the city manager. And uh, when I came in, these people, instead of trying to push me out, or instead of trying to make it hard for me to get in, mm -hmm. they embraced it. Sure. They engaged with me. They wanted me here. And they've been, they've been so awesome. Uh, it's, it's, the it's the best experience I've ever had right. working with the city. Well, I think my experience echoes yours. Um, oftentimes, you know, I'm not as experienced as open to businesses as you are. And so there's a lot of unknowns, right? You say I'm gonna open a business and you don't know about the different licenses and permits. You don't know all that stuff. And so you expect for the city to be helpful in getting you through that process. And Louisville has certainly been helpful. It's almost as if they actually wanted us here. Yeah. You know, sure. while some other towns and, and, and municipalities, they, they put up so many barriers, it makes it really tough for a smaller business to really, you know, get a momentum going, right? Because it's yeah. just one obstacle after another. Here, they did everything possible to make it comfortable for us. Yes. Um, the permitting process was easy. You know, getting permission for the signage was fairly easy. Uh, and there were things, certainly things I didn't know about. And mm -hmm. they were very, they were very kind of say, hey, just FYI, there's this one, this one or two things that you need to do. Here's how you go about doing it. It wasn't just, well, figure it out on your own. Yeah. Um, the city's been great. Even after we opened up, the number of city officials that stopped by just to say, hello, how are you? Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to the area was just incredible. Mm -hmm. I've been in other cities where no one ever stops by to say hello. No one ever stops by to say, you know, to check in. And certainly I know Old Town is an area that Louisville is really investing in and so they're putting a lot of effort, but it was a nice feeling to know that the city cared enough mm -hmm. to make sure we were doing things the right way and that we were gonna be able to open. Reg um, regardless, they, they, they don't have to come in. No, I mean, all. the mayor of Louisville, TJ, 
he spends as much time in your store as he does eating ribs. <laughs> well, he loves it. <laughs> well, that's a good compliment. He does stop by. I see TJ, you know, every other week, once a week, something like that. He stops by, and he always, you know, he always asks, how are things going? We had a few issues with uh, some lights. I said, hey, TJ, who do I talk to? Not, he can't fix everything on his own. So his question is, who do I talk to? He was very quick to say, call this number. In fact, and by the time I got there, got back to my office to call the number, they were already, they already knew about the issue mm -hmm. and got it fixed in a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a very small issue, by the way. Um, that's not the norm. Right. That's right. not the norm that the mayor is going to stop by and take an interest in your business. Right. It, they have a passion for the city, not just the position, but for the city. Yeah. And the, and the growth of the city and the people mm -hmm. of the city. TJ's a great mayor. He I hope he stays with us a long time. Claire, great city manager. Yeah. Eric, great deputy city manager. I love all of these people. You would think that in many ways that Old Town is Louisville. Yes, okay? yes. It's very easy to, to you know, it was 100,000 people in Louisville. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to, to forget that Louisville is a nice sized town. Yes. You know, and there's a lot more space for them, for these officials to cover than just Old Town. And so I do, I don't take it for granted that they, they stop by. I don't take it for granted that mm -hmm. they care about what we're doing down here. I think about that uh, from time to time. I think about, you know, we're, we're, we're in, engaged in Old Town, but then you get, you think, wait a minute, Louisville goes way out here and it goes, yeah. wow, there's a lot of Louisville. There's a lot of it. To cover. You're an asset to Old Town. We're so glad that Thank you're, you. that Thank you're you. in here. Uh, what is the, the kind of the percentage difference between what you sell in, in, in storefront and what you sell online? Yeah, so, um, you know, again, I started online, so I went from 100% online. Now I opened a, sec, a, a second store in, in the colony, and then now this one. We're pretty even mixed between all three at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not ex exactly how I want it. I'd much rather um, my online be the vast majority of what I sell, mm -hmm. right? It's lower margins, things like that. Uh, it's a lot easier to keep some of that money within the business when you're selling online, at least in my space. Mm -hmm. But it is also a a positive that my retail stores are doing well. Yes. The Old Town store, for instance, you know, has been great. I mean, we've only, we've only been open for less than a year, right. and it has already cons represents a good portion of our revenue coming in. That's because TJ shops there it's all the TJ time. TJ shops there all the time. That helps. We have a lot of folks that stop shop there. We have we do we definitely have some regulars in the, in the shop at this point. Yeah. But if you compare the Old Town store to the Colony store at Grandscape, I have far more people stop by the Colony store on a daily basis, mm -hmm. okay? But in terms of sales, they're equal. Oh. It's a different type of customer. Mm -hmm. Out of the colony, it's more of a suburban tourist customer. They're there for entertainment and going to the movies and things like that. The customers that come here, a lot of them are local folks. Mm -hmm. They're on a walk, they're even in walks, and they say, hey, we know you're here, we're looking for a gift for mm -hmm. you know, our, our son, or we're looking for a gift for our daughter. You know, We know you're here. It's a different vibe of customer here. Uh, when they walk in the door, they're there because they're looking for something very often. Mm -hmm. um, the street traffic, people just walking around the evenings, they're getting coffee or they're, they're getting dinner. That's been great. It's a different type of customer here than I'm used to, and mm -hmm. I'm really, really enjoying it. In 2020, what changed? How did you change your business during the, uh, the COVID pandemic? Well, for me, it wasn't as big of a change as other people because I was already doing a lot. A lot of folks were rushing, trying to figure out, how do I take my retail business online? How do I sell? How do I deliver? How do I do fulfillment? Fulfillment is a big one. Fulfillment meaning how do I get an order online and then ship it out? Mm -hmm. Well, we had been doing that. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it wasn't as big as change. Did it change. grow? Did it grow? It, it people, absolutely grew. We yeah. absolutely grew during, for, a time, for a period of time, whereas you know, people that had, may have gone to the store were only going online at that point. Right. And there was, there was a big emphasis on black owned businesses for a period of time and small businesses for a period of time. So people that normally would shop at Amazon, mm -hmm. right, were saying, hey, no, I don't want to shop at Amazon. Amazon's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I want to shop with all the small businesses I can find because those are the folks that need the most help and need the most support. And I greatly appreciate those new customers because, yep. you know, they realize that the small businesses are the ones upholding the community. Yeah, one of the things, uh one of the good things, if, any, if there were any good things that came out of COVID, was people began to engage more in local business, absolutely small business, wanting to be a help mm -hmm. to, uh, to uh, people in their, in their yeah. community. And I thought that was a great thing. How do you, how do you, I'm, by, by the way, I, I'm going to need those boots. I like those boots. Well, I'll tell you, these boots came from another local business. Yeah. Louisville Boot Co. right down the, right right down down the, road, the road here. Yeah. They made these boots for me. I bought the leather. The leather is some uh, leather I bought for um, for myself. So here's the deal. As a leather crafter, 
don't make a lot of things for myself, to be honest with you. If I make it and like it enough, typically there'll be a customer who walks in and says they like it too. Yeah. Well, heck, I'm going to let uh, the customer have it. Everything's for sale. This leather I bought for myself and my wife, and I earmarked for us. And so after holding on to it for about nine months, I took it down the road to Louisville Bucco, mm -hmm. asked it to make me a nice pair of custom boots and best pair of boots I've ever had, to be honest with you. They look so comfortable. They are comfortable. Now, I'm still in the break-in period. You know, a good pair of boots takes a while to break in. You sleep in those boots? I should. <laughs> 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 you did a great job, yeah. I sent a lot of folks down there. Well, anyway, anyway, I like them. So how do you come up with ideas? I mean, what's, what do you sit around and go, I think I'll make that? Yeah, that's almost how it works, to be honest with you. I, uh, there, so in, when you work in a creative space, and, and I work with my hands, but I also this is a creative space, it does require me, okay, because I, I didn't go to school for art design or fashion design. and I don't, I, This is all self-taught. Um, there is a lot of sitting around and staring out in space and saying, hey, I like to make this bag, but I don't know how to do that. And mm -hmm. so, you know, my wife's got used to me just staring off in space. And, space. and what I'm doing is I'm processing in my head how to take that, that idea and break it down into components and parts. And then what I've learned over the years is not only do I need to break it down into components and parts, but I need to break it down in a way where we can manufacture it, right? Because making one item is different from making an item that you're going to make 50 to 100 of. Mm -hmm. Right, this bag, for instance. Um, this is a gorgeous. Thank you. Bag. This is a, a kind of a takeoff of an old school uh, postal carrier bag, which are really big. They had a very simple lat latch on it. Uh, we have modified this in a way to be for uh, you put your laptop in there. It has a shoulder strap. It's very simple. Most of what we make, we try to keep as simple as possible because we want it to last. We're not in it to be trendy. We're not in it to to make you the bag that you saw on the Oscars or Grammys this week. We're in, in, in it to make you a bag that you're gonna carry and have for many years to come. So even one of my tote bags, we call it the Forever Tote. And that name came from my wife because she said a lady will have many purses. Most ladies will buy many purses over a period of time. But they always want that one bag they can go back to. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not striving to be the last purse that she ever buys. I'm striving to be the bag that she always goes back to, mm -hmm. right? It's the one that has stuck with her. It's the one that has has never let her down, the one that has the great quality leather that just gets better with time. Mm -hmm. That's what we, we strive to make. Odin, this bag, I would think like this bag right here would last a lifetime. This is one that you, that you drop down to your kids when you're gone. That is, uh, that is one of the goals. It's something you can leave in your wheel for sure. I'm t I'm, I can't, listen, I'm just going to sit here and <laughs> smell it. Well, it's funny. What you just did, put your head in the bag. You'd be surprised if people come to the store and do just that. They just want to smell the bag. They want to put their head in it and get a whiff of it. <laughs> well, there's just no other smell like it. Well, except barbecue, you know. Well, you know, barbecue, there's some certain smells, barbecue and leather, are smells that bring back memories. What about this one here? So that's a nice purse. That's a nice handbag we made. It's called the Riley Tote. Uh, we've been making those for a few years now. That one's in an English tan color. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and again, it's just a solid bag made with good quality materials. Great threads, great rivets. Uh, there's not a lot of stuff to go bad. Yeah, we've got a few other goodies in there. Oh, we're going to talk about them. <laughs> we're going to get to them because I like this stuff. That's one of the bags that we're known for, for sure. Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful bag. Let me just, listen, if you need to go to the bathroom or whatever, I'm just going to sit here and smell this. <laughs> what a beautiful bag. So, yeah, what'd you do? Did you just one day go... You know what? I think I'm just going to make a bag. Well, so this, here's the story. Here's the, 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 the origin story of Odin Leather Goods. Um, I've always been a creative person. Um, I've been in the creative space for a while. I've been a graphic designer, a web designer. I've been a marketing guy for the last 20 years. The challenge with those is that I ran into, they all required me to be on the computer all day and all night. Even my side hustles, if you will. When I was done with my day job, I'd go home. I had another company I was running on the side. But it required me to be on the computer, computer and on the phone all night long. And it was just taxing. It was just wearing me out, right? Because I'm a worker. I enjoy working. I don't like sitting around idle. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you do the same thing all day and then you do it all night, you just get burnt out. Sure. And so I was looking for another creative outlet. This is the creative outlet that came to me, really. Uh, my son was in the hospital for a period for two weeks. He was in the hospital when he was two years old. And on one of the times where I was able to leave the hospital and just kind of drive around and clear my head, I passed by a store that says Leather Supply. Okay, I just pulled in, figured I'm, I'm just wasting time before I had to go back to the hospital. Uh, pulled in, went inside, and they had this store full of these leather hides and tools and things like that. 
And I was like, oh, this is cool. And something told me, hey, yeah, buy some stuff. Hmm. I walked out of there, maybe $200, $300 worth of leather and mm-hmm. tools that honestly I didn't need, mm-hmm. you know, in hindsight. You must not have been married at that time. I was married, <laughs> you know, but, you know, she wasn't with me. So, um, but, but that leads to me how, to got, how I got in business also. Walked out of there with some tools, went home, made a few things, you know. Um, family was kind of, they were very kind and generous, uh, you know, to say, oh, it looks great. It did not look great. It was not great at all, but I appreciate them, sure. you know, hearing me. Uh, but that gave me enough, you know, kind of gumption to try it again. I made three or four things. They got a little better, a little better, a little better. I started going back to that same store, spending more money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and every time I went back there for another, another round of tools and leather, came home, made something, and it got a little better. And so at some point, I was like, man, I really want this to be good. I, wanted, I want my stuff to be just as good as the stuff you see in a big box store. Sure. What's the difference? So I started leaning in, uh, reading a lot, trying a lot of new things, talking to some people out there. And sure enough, things did get better over time. Mm-hmm. But you mentioned my wife. You know, mm-hmm. at some point she was like, "Okay, dude, <laughs> <laughs> you're dipping into the house fund a little bit too much for leather that you're ruining and throwing away, or whatever. You're not doing." I like much your with hobby, it. but I like your hobby, but you guys do something with this. And she knows I'm a little bit of a type A personality, so if we're going to do it, fine, we'll do it well, right? And I leaned in on it, and before you know it, the thing that was requiring me to pull money out of the household, I was starting to put money back into the household. Mm-hmm. And then before you know it, it was like, hey, not only am I putting money back in the household, now I'm putting significant money back in the household. Mm-hmm. You know, my day job and my hobby are now starting sure. to intersect. And um, at that point in time, everyone says, well, why don't you quit your day job? I was like, well, no, the only thing better than getting one check is getting two checks. I don't mind hustling. I don't mind working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Working is not a problem for me. And so I worked and worked and worked. And um, <clears throat> I ran my leather business in the evenings for... We did that for six years, nights and weekends, staying up from, you know, until one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, getting up at six and going to work the next day. Did that for about six years and uh, still have my corporate job all along. She is your greatest supporter, isn't she? She is my greatest supporter. She's also my biggest challenger. Mm -hmm. The person asked me the best questions. And Mm -hmm. that is something we all need. Mm -hmm. So, Odin, what am I looking at here? It's a tablet. So what you're looking at there is what we call a tally book. Uh, tally books for some, maybe some of our northern, northern friends, probably not a big deal, but for the folks down here, ranchers, auctioneers, and oil field guys, they live and die by their tally books. Um, it's definitely one of those books you can put in your back pocket, and those oil field guys absolutely love them. That's, that's, that's nice. And this right here is? <clears throat> this is what we call a mini trucker wallet. So if you are familiar with the old trucker wallets that, really, that had really long, that had a big chain attached to them, we don't do the chain. Uh, unless we're asked to do that, we have a mini version of that here, kind of the same style design, but something you can put in your pocket. It has a little coin uh, coin slot there. Probably holds, you know, ten to twenty cards, ten to ten to twelve cards, I should say. Easy to put in your front pocket or your back pocket. That one there is probably a bit more familiar in shape and format. <coughs> we call that, <coughs> excuse me, we call that a David Five Pocket Wallet, and it is a, just a great front pocket wallet for everyday use. I love that. This right here is just a, just a memo book. Just and a memo book. Surprisingly, those are one of the most popular items that we sell. These are things that people just love to have, right? Thing, and also the leather. I'll, I'll point out that, like this dark brown leather, it looks nice now. People love the way it looks, but it's the people that come back a year from now. Mm-hmm. They're gonna say, "Let me show you yeah. how it looks now." Yeah. Leather just gets better with time. Good yeah. leather gets yeah. better with time. They last forever. They right? last forever. These bags. Once they are used, and I say, you know, uh, kindly abused for a, a year or so, they get better and better and better, and people's attachment to them grows, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Leather kind of embodies lots, lots of memories. We all have a memory right. that's leather, maybe a baseball glove or mm-hmm. a belt that someone gave us or a bag that our grandpa gave us. They, they become part of you. They do. They, they really do. Part of you. A belt is something a gentleman may have on. He's going to wear that belt every day for the next, you know, 10 years or so. Yeah. Right? It is a part of him. It's, it has, it's, it's, it's part of his story. Odin, I, I, I didn't want to tell you this in the beginning, but other than those boots, I'm going to have to have all this stuff right here. We'll, we'll wrap it up for we'll you. We'll wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. How much is uh, God a part of your life? So you heard me mention earlier, uh, I think I may have mentioned God. It's very, been very important to us, okay? Um, I can tell you the backstory about my wife's father being a pastor, things like that. But those are all things, that, you know, that's happened to beasts. For me personally, 
God has been a huge influence because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just being honest. I don't know what I'm doing half the time. I wake up in the morning, don't know what I'm doing. So every step I take is guided by him, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, mm -hmm. right? Uh, he gives me some insights here and there. I ask him for, for advice. I ask him for guidance. And I just hope that I am living uh, up to his, um, uh, how do I say it? I'm living up to his standard, to be honest with you. That's my goal. He's very much a part of you. You know, uh, you can tell when God lives in a, in a human being and uh, shines through and the, uh, the spirit that they carry. And uh, you, you, Odin, you're just a fabulous guy. And we're you, so, so glad to have you in uh, Old Town. I'm happy to be here. So glad that you're who you are, who you are. So glad you eat my ribs. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> so glad that you were with us today. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thanks, folks. <laughs>